Gaius Laelius Sapiens, Consul 140 BCE. Gaius Laelius Sapiens is the son of Gaius Laelius. Just as his father before him stood forever in the shadow of his good friend Scipio Africanus, so too did Sapiens stand in the shadow of Scipio Aemilianus. The agnomen Sapiens means wise, but as we shall see, it may have been more appropriate to assign him the name Timidus, meaning timid. Though he is usually referred to as Laelius, I shall here call him Sapiens because it is the most undeserved positive name ascription that I am aware of. No Roman achieved greater historical documentation whilst making such a soft whimper and shallow impact on history. Sapiens was probably born in 188 BCE, making him only a few years older than Scipio Aemilianus. As Scipio's best friend, Sapiens was a key leader, eventually the key leader, of the Scipionic Circle. Since Cicero included Sapiens in his dialogues and drew his information from Sapiens' son-in-law, Quintus Musius Scaevola Augur, much is known about Sapiens, though all of it is written from the perspective of a complete and uncritical admirer. In public affairs, Scipio acted as the senior of the two men, but in private, and in particularly with regard to non-political philosophical issues, Scipio deferred to Sapiens' sapiens. Unlike most Roman aristocrats who were serial monogamists, Sapiens remained married to the same woman for his entire life. He seems to have been scholarly, just like his friend Scipio, and took full advantage of the windfall of Perseus' library and the influx of learned Greek captives such as Polybius the Historian and the Stoic philosopher Panadius. In politics, Sapiens was always clearly a follower of Scipio and never much more. He was going to run for the consulship in 141 BCE but decided to step down from running because another politician told him that he was planning to run. This politician waited for Sapiens to withdraw his candidacy and then re-entered the race and duly won the office. The newly elected consul for 141 was Quintus Pompeius, who was a distant relative, probably a cousin, of Pompey Strabo and Pompey the Great, whose branch of the family had not yet achieved senatorial status. Sapiens was carried to victory in the 140 elections by virtue of support from his powerful and popular friend, Scipio Emilianus. His agenda, once in office, was to advance Scipio's agenda and interest. In consultation with his friend Scipio, Sapiens advocated for political and social reforms to address the mounting problem of the excessive concentration of wealth in fewer and fewer hands. Over the course of the second century BCE, more and more small farmers came to ruin and were forced to sell their land to their wealthier neighbors. This was contributing to greater inequality among senators, since some of them were now vastly more wealthy than others. Landless farmers were crowding into Rome itself and creating domestic unrest, and a military manpower shortage was also coming about, since the requirement at the time was for recruits to own land and be able to provide themselves with their own arms and armor. Since Scipio sought, and not surprisingly did not receive, unanimous consent from the 300 aristocrats in the Senate for his land redistribution scheme, he simply gave up and convinced Sapiens to do the same. The implications seemed to be that Sapiens was determined to press on with this matter and uh, understood that the good of the Roman state outweighed the feelings of his fellow senators, who might stand to lose a few acres of land. This decision to back down earned Sapiens his nickname, since the other senators thought that it was wise to desist from such a divisive course of action. Had Scipio, whose military achievements and populist leanings, with his broad base of support, and Laelius, who was a very learned man, combined forces and stuck with their guns, they would have been a great deal more effective at passing desperately needed reforms than the young Gracchi brothers a decade later. Neither of the Gracchi ever exceeded the rank of Tribune, whereas Scipio Emilianus and Laelius were both consulars and war heroes. Sapiens was so wise and so well understood the desirability of elite consensus 
that he not only gave up due to the mere threat of opposition and disagreement in 140, but then turned his back on the Gracchi when they tried to advance ideas that he himself had once espoused and presumably still believed to be correct. His political cowardice from 140 BCE forward on the issue of land reform says a great deal more about his character than Cicero's dialogues ever could. Sapiens had neither sons nor grandsons, though his granddaughters by Musius Scaevola were known for the purity of their Latin. This most likely means that they spoke in an affected and archaic manner which only an aristocrat could actually enjoy or understand. Sapiens' great-grandson Metellus Scipio inherited the wisdom of attaching himself to a more capable individual, but did not succeed in making it into the coveted Lackey Hall of Fame, since he failed to understand that it was his destiny to remain as a right-hand man, just like his grandfather, Gaius Laelius Sapiens.